Hermes, he god, who can go in and out of the ground, he god, still wear it to keep power with the fathers. Now I have need of you, back home from long exile. This is the grave mound of Agamemnon, my father. Help my cries through the ground to his ghost. I lop off one lock and so move into manhood. This one for your mound is a mark of my mourning. Your son and heir wasn't here to salute you. No final farewell as the earth was flung over. Look there. What's that? That procession of women wending this way, all dressed in drab dirt clothes. What's it in aid of? More doom. More disaster. They're carrying jars. Jars full of libations. I suppose that they're socks for my father's soul spirit. It must be. There among all the mourners is my sheikin. Electra, wasted by weeping. Zeus, high he god, help it to happen. The vengeance I want to take for my father. Pile of ease, you and I stand aside, keep out of eyeshot, till we're sure of the meaning of the rites we're to witness. Coerced into keening by Queen Clytemnestra for King Agamemnon. As if for our blood kin. We carry these ghost socks out to his grave mound. Lashed out to lament the lost lord of Argos. We Trojans trench flesh ruts into our faces. There's no need to coerce as we cry anyway. Our lives have been one long meal of mourning. One lifelong banquet. One blowout of bail. We claw our clothes up. Mad in our mourning. Our ripped, hat wrapped shriek as we shred them. This blood cleansed doomed demon, disguised as a dream, crashed through into Clytemnestra's calm midnight. And squeezed from the queen's throat a throttling shriek. A cry that re-echoed through each recess and corner. And pounded for entry to the coops that we're penned in. The whole household heard it. Our hair stood on end. Then spoke a clan seer whose knowledge was nightmares. The bitter dead below. Bellowed for blood dew. So Godsop, she sent. Empty gifts and libation. Meant to ward off what gnaws her at night time. Sends me out here as soon as the dawn breaks. That woman hated and loathed by the he-gods. The grave charms she wants get choked in my gullet. What Godsop or bribe makes spilt blood unspilt? Shed blood shed forever. The dead stay dead. This blood clan, this house, what hasn't it suffered? Merc. Manchun and Selma smothers the blood clan. When the clan chief, its light, is stifled by death, death down, mouldering under his grave mound. He counted for something. The king of this blood clan. Battle proof power. Both strife proof and plot proof. The lips of his people respected that power. Their hearts honored their hero and helmsman. Now all honors usurped by terror, the tyrant. Success gets sucked up to the god is good life lot. All grovel to that as to godhead or greater. 
but to those who long in the luck of their lifelong. The justice of blood rights, the bolts from the black. Some netted at noontime, others at nighttime. Daylight or darkness, both nourish their doom. When the earth's gullets choked on the gore, it has gulped. The blood glut clots rock like and can't reach earth's gut. Guilt in the guilty likewise stays clotted. The cankers of guilt craze the culprit and kill him. The blood of the killed, the bed blood of virgins. Those dooms we endured in the downfall of Troy is worn by the guilty like gauntlets of gore. All the world's waters forced through one funnel and sprayed at the blood spot as much good as spittle. Necessity! That brought us to where we are now. Hauled from our homeland. Dragged here as drudges. Loved into a light lot of loving and lonely. Brought into bondage. Dooms dragnet round Troy. We bite hard on the horse bits, gulp down our gall, and go through these grief shows as she commanded. But our grief is no shamming. The tears shed are true. Mourning our helplessness under harsh masters. Our massacred menfolk. The mass graves of Troy. Women, Troy's war spoils. Now, palace work slaves whose work gives the palace its appearance of order. Since you've been sent to attend me, give me advice. What graveside grace goes best with these grave cups? What address would my father find even decent? To the man from the woman. To the loved from the loving. Call Clytemnestra, my mother, a woman who loves. I don't have the nerve, the effrontery for that. What to say as I pour honey, then milk, wine, and then water? What's usually intoned here is useless, insulting. To those who send grave gifts, send the good they deserve. The good they deserve, the same fate as my father's, no words. But a silence, the way he was slaughtered, pouring the grief cups as if they were slop pails. Friends, serf women, preborn. Both fettered to fate, shackled to shame, we share the same hatred. Between us there need be no sort of secret. I swear by the cairn that keeps the king's dust, I speak all my secrets and you have my trust. Speak then. I swear the same oath you all swore. Well, those you can trust, pray as you pour. Those I can trust, who near me still true. Yourself. Those who hate Aegisthus are too. Then myself and you. Do you count on my side? Judge only my words, then you can decide. Who else can be counted? Consider and say. Orestes. Orestes. Though still far away. Orestes. Orestes. The best thing to say. For those you can't trust, the killers pray. Pray? What? Tell me, I'm eager to learn. Pray that a man or a god will return. Return to reckon the guilt of those two? No, kill them. That's all blood for blood. That'll do. Demand gods to deal death. Is that right or good? Right and good. Right and good. Blood demands blood. God guide and ground God. God go between Herod, linking upper and nether, the dead and the living. Hermes, he god, help me and get them to hear me, the spirits I pray to that prosper this palace, and get her to hear me, the greatest of she gods, Earth, who pushes all beings out of her belly, suckles her creatures and swells with their corpses. Get her to listen. I pour the libation and pray to my father. Pity for me, for Orestes. This black clan's benighted, and he's its bright beacon. 
We're both dispossessed, deprived of our blood right. She bartered her bairns and bought as her bedmate Aegisthus, who shares in the guilt of your killing. Electra's a bond slave, and Orestes an exile. Clytemnestra and Aegisthus, basking and idle, lull in the luxury made by your labors. I pray Orestes returns with luck in his life lot, and my life lot unsullied, not marred like my mother's, heart and hands blameless, unblemished by blood. These prayers on our part, and for them we oppose. I pray the blood grudge fulfiller will soon be appearing, the butchers be butchered, and pay blood for blood. Agamemnon, come up at the head of the ground gods. Agamemnon, come up with Earth, the great she-god. Bring blessings and blood rites, blazing with laurels. These are my prayers, and I pour your libation. You water the seed of my prayer with your wailing. As I pour, deliver the dead a due grave dirge. Tears drop on your dark head, drop by drop, the way you bled your grave bones, bones, bad and good. What we beg is blood. Gods I've invoked are wise to what sea swells. We're whirled on like sailors in shipwreck. If we were meant to, then scrape home we will. A great oak can sprout from the tiniest acorn. I call on these gods for my prayers to be answered. Then answer those prayers. The gods favor you. Now pray that our future is fortunate too. Our future? Prayers answered? What do you mean? You pray to see something. Now you have seen. 
How do you know what it was that I prayed? For your much-loved Orestes to come to your aid. Then how can you say that the gods favor me? You got what you pray for. Look! I am he. Stranger, you're weaving some net or some snare. If you are entangled, I am also trapped there. You mock my misfortune, make it a game? I mock my own, then. My misfortune's the same. Orestes, Orestes, is that really your name? You look at me and still can't recognize your blunkin, your brother before your eyes. Yet when you looked at the lock I had laid, you gasped as if gazing straight into my face. Look, that's where I locked it from. Match it with mine. Look how alike our kin the two locks are. Look at this weaving your fingers once fashioned. The stroke of your baton, the patterns of beasts. Easy. Still. Keep all emotion masked within. Our nearest and dearest would like us destroyed. Beloved, the beacon of this blacked out blood clan. The seed of deliverance watered by weeping. The love of four bloodkin belongs to you only. Loathed mother, lost father, sacrificed sister, and brother, the bloodkin I truly believe in. Brute force and blood right, and Zeus, the high he god, be your protectors in pursuing our blood grudge. Zeus! High he god, steal us to the struggle. Fledglings, left fatherless when the great eagle got snarled in the shuffling coils of the she snake. Fatherless fledglings, famished orphans, too feeble to carry the quarry off back to the eerie. Fledglings and fatherless, Orestes, Electra, both outcasts alike and blocked from their blood right. Eagle Agamemnon gave the he gods a gift glut. The godstones of Argos bubbled with blood flow. Cut down these egrets. Your guts will go goatless. With the bowl of the blood clan blasted, no bull's gore will gurgle down godstones on sacrifice days. So nourish the nestlings. Build up the blood clan. Though now it looks much too low to be lifted. Quiet. If you want your blood clan rebuilding, the whole space of Argos whispers with spies. It only needs one to report to our rulers. One day, very soon, I hope we'll be watching their flesh spit through flames and bubbling pit. Apollo stays close till all gets accomplished. His oracle told me to push through our blood grudge. And if I flinched from fulfilling the blood grudge by killing those guilty of killing our father, he warned me my heart's blood would harden and freeze by not taking their lives. My own would be taken, but not before tasting great torture and torments. He detailed diseases, malignant malaises. The unappeased dead demand as appeasement, skin canker, skin scabs, flaying the flesh raw, crusted with fungus, sprouting white bristles. The perpetual prowling of the black pack of furies, whose dark nightly salt licks the blood of my father. Darts from deep darkness, shafts, Shot from below for the killing of blood kin who bay for their blood grudge, frenzy and mania, phantoms at midnight, venomous shadows that slink into his sleep time. He blinks, rubs his eyes, they're still at his bedside, harried and hounded out of his homeland, a palsied pariah, scarred over by scourges, flayed by brass flail rods, a leprosy carcass, such scapegoat sharing no wine bowl libations. No one spares him bed bread or broth bowl. All godstones are barred him and gobbled alive by buboes and flesh blight, he perishes fendless. When that god says do it, no one says no. Without any god goad, I've still got my grudges, still got my grief for Agamemnon, my father. Dispossessed, I need no spurs to my spirit. And those men of Argos, whose glory is greatest, who brave long war boldly and battered down Troy, now sheepish and slave-like, to a woman and she-man who queens it beside the real clan chief, his consort. 
This weapon I wield will unmask the one. She gods of life lot. Zeus, I he god. Only gods can stop the rocks Dracula up out of bag. Blood flow for blood flow. Death blow for death blow. Blood debt for blood debt. Keeping the blades wet. Bloodshed for bloodshed. Keeping the blades red. What you do gets done back. You him him you. Hack slash slash hack. Three generations through. She gods of life lot. Zeus, by ye god! Father, father, doused in doom, kept immovable by death, what can grope through your grave gloom, unbreachable by light or breath? What words can worm their way through the sour soil of sorrow? What beacon of bright Day, burrow your dark barrel. From all the blood clan's grave rites, they barred and blocked your bones. Never budging hell by night, death, heavy anchor stones. The gnashing jaws of fire, no, no. only the corpse is rotten flesh. flesh. Blood grudge goes on craving no. gore and doesn't crumble into ash. ash. When black and keen, the killer feels their dirges haunt him like halloos. The hounds of grief pay at his heels, the dead demanding their blood dues. For the blood king's dirge is a keening net, his troubles trawl for guilt. Mourning spreads its mesh to get, guilt netted, gaffed and killed. Now it's Electra, your she-child, who mourns and beats her breast. The wailing comes out rushed and wild, long tripped up and repressed. Now listen to your she-child's dirge. He-child, she-child. Both in turn, both exiles, outcasts, urge your spirit from its urn. Bout one, bout two, we lost to fate. The same fate that threw you. Unless your spirit lends its weight, bout three will be lost too. Gods can make a great desert. Gods can make a great desert flat. Credit won't last back. Instead of dirges, we might sing. that you had lost your life to a Trojan in the war. Not netted by a treacherous wife, your bath trough grimed with gore. Then heroes on a you'd be queen, we could have borne it if your bones were still in Asia and beneath the tomb of tar and stones. A hero in that hero's grave. A tomb came like a tower, the comfort of the clenchy state. And wielding its own power. A monument, a glorious mound, dignity, no shame. Agamemnon, underground, with still unblemished name. No heroes can, not killed, not dead, no mass grave by Scamander. I want fate standing on its head, the goose hacked by the gander. As your killers hacked you, hack! Hack! Hack on your killers first! Hack! I want time to be turned back! Hack! My father's fate reversed! You, him, him, you! Hack! Slash, slash, hack! North of the North Wind lives a clan spared the mortal lot of man. But this is South! A man cannot turn back the tide of his life lot! Gold come cheaper than new blood, but you are young and dream of good! When you two drove your palms together, the pulse gets passed down to your father! If those with blood guilt beat the ground, their gloves of blood will dull the sound. But the dead respond to you, the guiltless tone of your tattoo.
The blood gods use his penis being asleep. Drag it up from his earthen bed. The blood gods bomb the ride to keep us drag my mother dead. Yeah. On the day that I marry, your mound will mean most. Earth, she god, let my father back me. Asa, Asa, she ground god, grant victory. Remember the bastrop where you were struck dead. Remember the net thing cast over your head? In silk stuff, not steel, where you spew out your blood. Humbled and hacked down under a hood. Don't taunts such as these torment you down there? Shove your head through the earth to show us you care. Blood right. 
I want it to back me in the bout that's to be. I want the headlock on them that they got on you, flatten them to the floor as they flatten you. They out-wrestled you, but I'll best them this bout. This last and no more. Eagle Agamemnon, your egrets call you from your grave, eerie. Fledglings and fatherless, he child and she child. Don't let the seed of Pelops perish forever. Death's no death when the blood kinder flourish. Blood kinder! Cork floats that keep the net buoyant. When the flax strings get sodden, they keep it from sinking. For the sake of your spirit, we've spent this time pleading. Grant us your grace and your ghosts, the first gainer. Since his grave has been given no clan lamentation, the length of your mourning was right and becoming. Now you've gorged on your grave dirge. Go into action. And find out where fate and your life lot will lead you. <laughs> so I will. But before I do battle, I want to be told why she sent out this crowd of you carrying cups. Libation so late for a crime past all curing. Neither the honey, the milk, the wine or the water have savour or solace for skulls without senses. What you pour may be precious, but poultry as godsops, the grave gift so meagre, the crime so immense. A man can daub tombs with all his hives honey, swill all his wine stores over the stones, empty his flocks and herds others daily, waste all his water and still smell of murder. So what do they mean, Clytemnestra's libations? I know what they mean. Clytemnestra had nightmares. Shaken by shadows that slunk into her sleep time. Now, though she's godless, she sends gifts to his gravestone. more to the dream you can tell me about? She opened her legs and a serpent crawled out. Tell me the rest if you know how it goes. She swayed her snake baby in swaddling clothes. This baby, this snake thing, how did she feed it? She says that it sucked at her very own tit. And did it not pain her to give a snake suck? Blood. Clots came out with each mouthful it took. No dream, mother. Here's your snake, baby. Look! She shrieked out in her sleep and woke with a start. All the Dow's torchlights, made eyeless for night time, blazed out of their blindness to comfort the queen. At dawn, she dispatched us with the dead man's libations to lance the pus bloated boil of her sorrow. Then, by the earth and the grave of my father, I pray I'm this vision's fleshly fulfiller. The snake came out of the same womb as I did, swathed in the same swaddling clothes as myself, sucked at the same breast I sucked as a baby, got blood clots mixed in as it sucked the milk out so that she who gave suck screamed out in a panic. Same womb. Same swaddling clothes, same breast to suck on, blood and milk. All point to me and to murder. The sun in the snake scales sent as her slayer. My reason tells me that you read the dream rightly. Now. Give your instructions to those on your side. Who should work with you? Who should be watchers? Simple. My sister must stay in the palace, keeping the bond struck between us a secret. By cunning they killed, by cunning they'll die, caught in the same net they caught Agamemnon. Apollo commands it! And Apollo's a prophet whose habit has never been falsehood before. I, like a stranger with backpack and bundles, will come in this guise to the gates of the courtyard with Pylades here, son of Strophius of Phocis, bound to our blood clan by hand clasp and spear bond. Will both of us speak like they do in Parnassus, assuming the accent of the folk back in Phocis? 
If the Gateman's ungracious and treats us with gruffness on the grounds that this house is afflicted by fate, we'll stay so that passers-by stop and start saying it just as goes against our God-ordained guest right by keeping these wanderers waiting, unwelcomed. But once past the gate lodge and into the palace, if I find that creature on the throne of my father, before he gets chance for looking me over and asking, where does the stranger hail from, I'll strike. My answer to him will be straight to the point. Straight to the sword point. Guts on my skewer. The fury that squats in this clan's never famished, never gone short of its gore shots to guzzle. This third and last cups to quaff undiluted. Electra, keep watch on what happens within so that the details all dovetail in neatly. Keep quiet where you can or take care when talking. And Pylades, my companion, keep close to me. See, I wield my sword well in the fight that's to follow. Monsters rock in the arms of the sea. Fearful sky flames flare and fall through terrible, void territory. Monsters, meteors, sea, soil, space, things that fly, creep, crawl. Of all these horrors, the human race is the terror that tops them all. Male boasting, pride in being he, only one thing's got that beat. Bursting bedbound bestially, the female bitch on heat. The plot against your man lord's life. Try to nest to kill a wife. Against a man his enemies revered and all his spear foes justly feared. You pride to pile us half in stay. A spearless she man in your bed. Lemnos. Its very name is vile. Clytemnestra should have been of that murderous and manless isle, the killer queen. Queen of women, who wield knives or slaughtered husband's sword. The Lemnos husband killing wives. Lemnos, name to be abhorred. The sword point pricks against the skin, ready to be driven in. Blood right pushes at the hilt to broach the gory springs of guilt. The transgressors, those who trod down the laws of Zeus High Pegon. Blood right's the witch toe, where feet wets. The blades demanding old blood debts. Blood right leads the sun at last to purge the blood spill of the past. Is nobody there? Are the good laws of guest right ignored by Aegisthus? I hear you, I hear you. Where are you from, stranger? Go tell your masters there's someone with tidings. And quick, the war car of night drives on the darkness. Time travelers were thinking about dropping anchor in a place that makes all wayfarers welcome. Fetch someone out in authority here. Fetch the mistress. No! Maybe the man would be fitter. With women, words have to be guarded and careful. But man to man, I can say what I mean, and no hedging. Stranger, all you have to do is declare what your need is. 
Such a house can supply every kindness and comfort. Warm baths, beds that are balm to limbs worn by travel. Honest eyes that watch over your wishes and wants. But if what you come for is weightier counsel, that's work for the menfolk, and I'll see that you meet. I'm not from these parts, but from Daulis in Focus. I was trekking to Argos, my gear in this backpack, when I meet with a stranger who asks where I'm off to. I tell him Argos, and when he hears that, this stranger, Stropius, a Phosian, that's who the man turns out to be, says to me, since you're in any case going to Argos, you could save me a journey and take me a message. A message concerning a man called Orestes. Announce to the parents in Argos the death of Orestes. Then ask if they want him fetched home, his ashes, or if he's to lie here in focus, forever an exile. A good bronze urn guards his ashes at present. His ashes got tears shed. The man got some mourning. I pass on his words as he spoke them, not knowing if whom I'm addressing is directly related. It seems proper to speak to a parent in person. Your news brings the whole house down on our heads. Ungrappleable blood grudge that bullies this blood clan, possessing the piercing sharp eye of the prey bird, takes aim from safe ambush to send it sharp, sharp home. You stripped me of near ones, leaving me naked. And now Orestes, who seemed to tread, surely, who kept clear of the clay this blood clan gets stuck in. He was the one hope we still held for this household, the balm we all banked on for the blood grudges orgies. Orestes, our hope, must be crossed off the roll call. With hosts such as you here, so favoured by fortune. I'd more gladly be a guest whose tidings were good ones. Between host and guest, there's no goodwill greater. But the bonds that I've given both bind me to truth. My bond to Stropius, my guest bond as stranger. Your words won't make you the less warmly welcomed. If you hadn't brought them, someone was bound to. It's time now that travellers who've spent the day trekking should cease feeling footsore and seek out their comforts. Take them to where the man-guests get quartered, him and the man who's his travelling companion. Supply them with comforts this palace is famed for. Serve them in all things, or answer to me. Meanwhile, I'll convey your news to the clan chief, and along with all our true, loyal supporters, we'll hold a clan council and consider the case. Supporters of the true blood kin, when can we let our pet feelings out? When snatch out the galling gag of grief and give Orestes the victory shout? Earth, she god, high grave mound, dumped on the lord of the seas. Send help up from underground, prosper these prayers and please. Word guile, word guile gets things done, and ground god Hermes, who can throw dust in the eyes of everyone, pushes the blade in from below. Seems our fake potion is working already. I see the old nurse of Orestes walking here weeping. Kelissa, where are you going to? Through the gate yard, with woe the unwanted one walking beside you. Queen Clytemnestra says quick, fetch Aegistus, to meet man to man with some strangers who've come. Confront them in person and hear the new tidings. In front of the serfs, she faked grief on her features, but her eyes through the mask wore nothing like mourning. Nay, they blazed like joy beacons at what had befallen. The news that's been brought's a great bane for this blood clan, but for Aegistus, a just cause for rejoicing. This household's caused me perpetual heartache. No bane to this blood clan ever beat this one. Death shook the house, and I shrugged. 
But now it's Orestes. My little Orestes, who I wore out my life for. Came straight off his mother and got clapped to my paps. Got these very breasts as a baby, Orestes. Trouble? That lad gave me trouble in ton loads. Let me a dance he did, demanding, demanding. Getting me up from my couch with his crying, and when I was with him, there was nothing he wanted. Like puppies, aren't they, though? Babies. Still in their nappies, what can they do? Nothing. While they lack language, they just keep you guessing. Is it hunger or thirst pangs or wanting to piddle? Their little bellies just do it regardless. You have to read minds. Keep one jump ahead. Or else you get caught with that crap to clean out. Wet nurse and washerwoman, I was to Orestes. Had him entrusted by King Agamemnon. Now I hear that he's dead. My dear little baby. I'm off to it, just as the bane of this blood clan. When he hears of the death, he'll be glad and delighted. How is he to come? Does she say how the queen? How? Don't get you, don't know what you mean. I mean, does she tell him to come armed or not? Oh, armed and attended. His spearmen will not. Then tell him there's no need of his combatant gear. Tell him just as there's joy in what he's to hear. Tell him, come quickly, the man we all hate. The messenger's mouth sets a twisted tail straight. Are you trying to tell me this news makes you glad? Why not? If Zeus will drive good, I'm a bad. But Orestes, our one hope. He's gone, as you know. Only a blind seer would say that was so. What are you saying? Is there more to be known? The gods will do their work. You do your own. I will. I'm off with my message. I've no doubt the gods and their wisdom will sort it all out. The god clan Zeus now send this house a balanced end. Let the lovers of good law get the blood rights they've longed for. Let the man who's gone within meet with his enemies and win. If you help him, your godstone will get more goats than it's ever known. Now that he's nearly won his race, see he keeps up his winning pace. Don't let him slacken off so late and falter halfway down the straight. Let fresh blood flow now wash clean all the blood flow that has been. Apollo, healer, whose light even makes the deep dark cave a haven. Let the beacon freedom blaze through the veils of murk and haze. And when the deed is to be done, courage, when she called you son, shout back my fathers, call his name, do the blood deed with no blame. Be like Perseus, one who slew a monster woman, as will you. Those below the earth and those above want their blood grudge, not son's love. Plunge your sword up to the hilt in the cause of this blood guilt. I'm told certain strangers have brought baleful tidings, news most unwelcome, the death of Orestes. The beast's backs already rubbed raw by its burdens, and now it gets plagued by another sore pack, gall. Am I to take this as fact and as proven, or is it mere women's talk starting up panic? Words flying and burning themselves out for nothing. Who knows any more to make it all plainer? We heard the same story as you, but we're only women. You don't need to listen to second-hand hearsay. Go inside straight away and question the stranger. Yes, I want to have the messenger question. If he himself witnessed the death of Orestes, or whether he's simply passing on rumors, 
I'm too open-eyed to be gulled or outsmarted. Are now brought out for the final killing bout. Either Clytemnestra's cleaver finishes the clan forever, or Agamemnon's son can light the beacon freedom in Black Knight. In the blood bout, two to one. Back up, Agamemnon's son! Loses that cry. The clan's in the balance. Better we women withdraw till it's settled. Whatever the outcome, we must seem to be blameless. One way or another, the battle's decided. He's killed! The master, he's killed! The master, Aegisthus! Open the doors of the women's apartments! A strong arm's needed! For he's past help, Aegisthus! There's no point in shouting, deaf or asleep. But where's Clytemnestra? Her head's the next one due for the hack block. The axe shaft's poised in the clenched fist of blood right. Who's that shouting for help in the palace? The dead, the dead are hacking the living down. Your riddles by no means baffling to me. We're to be killed by the same guy we killed by. Give me my man axe, my king cleaver, quick. Who's victor? Who's vanquished? It's you I'm after! He's had enough, the one inside! Dead! Dead! My shield, dear Aegisthus! Your dear Aegisthus! Then into his grave bed, continue your coupling as cold, stiffened corpses! Carry on tapping under your tomb cairn. Orestes, have pity. These breasts you nestled on and nuzzled the nipples for their nourishing milk. Pylades, what shall I do? Shame, pity, or or make me shrink from killing my mother. Remember Apollo, and do what you swore. Give grudge to mankind, but not to the god clan. I remember Apollo. Your words win this bout. Inside! I want to kill you on top of his body, since you preferred him when alive to my father. Aegisthus greater than King Agamemnon. The one you should have showered love on, not hatred. Beside your dear one, even in death. I want to grow old with the sun these breasts fed. My father's murderess eating my bread. She got a fate, son. She played her part. The same she got then drives my sword through your heart. Your mother's blood grudges, don't they make you scared? Mother? Would she throw her son out if she had cared? thrown out, sent to an ally when Argos got hot. Sold a chief's son, a free man, and sold for what? Yes, if I sold you, what was my pay? Too shameful to think of, let alone say. Or of your father, or of his shame. He suffered, you sat here. Spare him your blame. A woman suffers with her man at the wars. But his toil supports her while she sits indoors. So you condemn me, your mother, to die? <laughs> <laughs>
Your own actions condemn you, mother. Not I. Your mother's blood grudges like dogs. We are hunted. I'm hunted by my fathers. So what can I do? Death is the grave hole. My son pays no heed. When my father was murdered, you started to bleed. You. You were the snake crawled out of my womb. Your nightmare was true. It showed you your tomb. You killed my father. I kill my mother. One blood wrong gives birth to another. for this fallen couple, but better arrest these serfs over this blood crest than the eye of the blood clan is shuttered forever. Time brings blood right to blast Troy. Agamemnon's house next call. Two lions enter and destroy the house, and now the lions fall. Orestes, guided by Apollo, comes home and hacks them dead. The distant exile has to follow the god goad in his head. At last this house is free, restored to its old health. Dead the ones who let it bleed away its wealth. The killer had to be concealed. He counterfeited, then attacked. Blood right, Zeus's she-child steeled his right hand as he hacked. At last this house is freed, restored to its old health. Dead the ones who let it bleed away its wealth. Apollo cries from deep cleft shrine. Guile crushes guile, deceit, deceit. We've got to trust whatever divine power helps us to our feet. The beacons relit, lights in the halls, our shade of bit, cause no more cause. Us of Atreus, stand, get up. Scrubs the blood off the bricks. Drives the blood grudge squatters out now. All three, I say six. The beacons relit, lights in the halls. Past chain and bit, cause no more goals. House of Atreus, stand, get up. who crushed you. They killed my father and blasted the blood clan. Popped up with pride they were up on their throne stools and still in love, look, still clinging so closely, carrying their bed bond into the grave hole. The pledges they gave have both been accomplished. Kill my father together, together to fall. Now, look again. You who were here to bear witness, this contrivance they fangled to fetter my father. Both his hands and feet held fast and hobbled. Spread the thing out. Gather round in a circle. Display the great cloak shroud so that the father, 
not mine, but the son who sees all things I mean by the father, can see the crime of my mother in all its true grimness. So when I stand trial, the son will bear witness that Orestes was right to go through with his killing, right to kill his mother. As for Aegisthus, he got the just death all adulterers deserve. What of her who hatched this horror up for her husband, whose children she carried under her girdle, a burden apparently loved, but really abhorrent? What about her? If she'd been shark hag or viper, just the mere feel of her, without any fang marks, would turn her poor victim purple with poison, make him all stiff and all swollen with blood. Her spirit alone spurts out putrefaction. What shall I call it? What name gives it status? Net to snare animals? Shroud for a corpse? Drape for a bath trough? No net's the best name. Call it a hunting net. Trip rope, a trap rope, an ideal device for roadside desperados who lurk by the highway, waylaying wayfarers. With one of these, they'd snare them in thousands. Rather than end up with a wife like my mother, I'd rather die without air. Without he, child. In this net he bled to death, a butcher's carcass bathed in blood. For the one who still draws breath, suffering bursts into bud. Did she do the deed or not? This is my witness. The cloth all be crimsoned by the sword of Aegisthus. The embroidery rotted by time and by bloodstains. Wailing over this web gives my father his grave dirge. My dirge is for all the deeds done by this blood clan. I've won this bout, but the laurels are blood smirched. No man's life lot ever goes painless till the post is passed. Man gets preyed on by his woes from his first day to his last. I've got to tell you, the whole thing's unending. My chariot races. I rein my team in as they're charging. The uncontrolled horses crash into the track rails. They gallop my mind off, dragging behind them. Fear squats in my mind, plays music for scaring. But while I still have some grip, I say to the Argives, I was right to kill Clytemnestra, my mother, daubed in my father's blood, hated by he gods. Apollo's voice was my chief provocation. Do what you have to and go away guiltless. Don't do it and... The pains that he promised were out of all range of man's usual troubles. Look at me, now, with this olive, this garland. I go as a suppliant to Apollo's great godstone, where purifying fires are forever kept burning, exiled for shedding the blood of my blood kin. I beg men of Argos, now and in future, to bear witness as to how these horrors happened. I go as a wanderer, exiled from my blood right. Living or dead, I leave you my memory. The memory will be of a man who did well. Don't burden your mouth with any bad omens. You brought freedom back to the city of Argos by lopping the heads off two serpents at once. Garb black and twined with snakes for hair. I've got to run. It's nothing, Orestes. It's all in your mind. Fear nothing. Your father's pleased with his loyal son. These aren't in the mind. They're real and they're near. My mother's grudge dogs close at my heels. Orestes, it's fresh blood on your hands makes you fear. It's only blood frenzy your spirit feels. Apollo, look at them. More, more, more. Through black blood ooze, their eyes stare straight at me! Apollo's the one god to cleanse you of gore! A touch of Apollo will set you free! You can't see them. I can, though. They're baying for my blood, I've got to go! 
then let the god you go to give you sustenance and help you live. This, the third storm blast to buffet this blood clan. One, the banquet of babes, the bane of Hyestes. Two, the Achaean warlord hacked down in his back trough. Three, the deliverer, or new doom in disguise. When will the blood grudge be weaned off blood? When will it sleep? The fiend? <laughs> <laughs>